It is 841 and the Justice Department proposes some new rules for the operation of inmate trust fund accounts, money the incarcerated used to buy items, for example, in prison commissary. The Bureau of Prisons taking this front and center after several high profile inmates like former USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser and R. Kelly had thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in their accounts, but were making very small, if any, payments to their victims. On the surface, to many, this sounds like a good policy. But the new rule would take 75% of money sent to everyone in prison. To explain more about this proposal, Kevin Ring, the president of FAM, and Cecilia Cardenas, who spent 10 years in prison. Good morning to both of you. And Kevin, I want to start with you. You're so good at laying out policies like this one, the good and the bad, and why our viewers should care. What do you want them to know? Well, I want them to know that the impetus for this rule is a good one. As you mentioned, Larry Nasser, who was the former USA gymnastics coach who abused hundreds of girls and women, there are a few people like that in prison who have tens of thousands of dollars on their prison bank accounts, and yet they owe thousands in restitution to victims who deserve that money. And we think the Justice Department is right to update its rule to make sure that it targets sharks like that who owe money to victims. And so that's fine and there is a way to do that without penalizing everybody but what the new rule does as you said is it takes 75 percent of any money that a family sends in to their loved one who's incarcerated the problem with that is you know a lot of people in prison don't have any money they make no money in their jobs and so the money that comes in is used for basics and for things like staying in touch with your family to keep those family bonds strong for phone calls for emails you really have to pay for everything in prison and so to take that money away to punish everybody because of the sins of a few is really going to create an unhealthy and unsafe prison environment and you don't want that 95 percent of these folks are coming home someday we want them to come back better not worse and so this is a rule that misses the mark by going way too broad absolutely cecilia um, i know that you know about this and I, I wanted you to be able to talk about you know explain how this works for you and you know what kind of things do people buy while they're in prison that can really maybe hit home a little bit more about why this would not be a good thing for everyone Sure. So we have a $360 spending limit while we're incarcerated. And um, so no matter how much money you have on your books, you can't spend it all every month. Um, I know for myself, I focus on buying hygiene, boots, tennis shoes. Boots will run you $120 while you're incarcerated. Tennis shoes, anywhere from $60 to $100. Shampoo could be anywhere from $7 to $10. A bra would cost you $15 to $20 some dollars, maybe even $30 depending on the size. So your money goes pretty quickly. Um, I would say that they already have a system in place where while you're working, 50% of your money does go towards mm -hmm. restitution. The only problem is we only make about 12 to maybe $50 a month while we're incarcerated working. Yeah, I think that's important. People don't always know those specifics. I mean, you're talking, if you're making, let's say you're making $12 a month mm -hmm. and someone took 75% of that, you couldn't buy a bra. Yeah. I mean, you literally cannot exactly. buy a bra while you're in prison. Mm -hmm. um, but Kevin, yeah. where does this proposal stand? And does it have any kind of backing or does it have a lot of backing right now? Well, what happened is this became a political problem because there were some news stories that profiled the very few people who are rich and are not paying restitution mm -hmm. to their victims, like R. Kelly and you mentioned Larry Nasser. And so it became a political problem for the Justice Department and they developed this rule. And again, we are fully on board with the idea that these folks have to pay their victims. And we think everybody should pay their victims and pay their court fees. It's just it should be done in proportion to the amount of money you have. Mm. And and that's where this rule misses mark. So they've proposed it. Now there's a period of public comment where we're encouraging people to weigh in. We're weighing in and letting people know how this will impact the vast majority of people in prison who have very little money. Yeah, Cecile, you have about 20 seconds left. What would be your final word if there is someone watching this morning that is open-minded to seeing the other side of this? Um, I guess I would say that maybe you should put other systems in place, like pay the inmates more money while they're working, while they're incarcerated, if you want to see that return, or implement maybe some work while incarcerated programs so those individuals can pay their restitution. Cecilia, um, I really appreciate you um, coming on today and really sharing and letting people know what is happening. And Kevin, you always do such a great job of really giving us the honest view of this. So thank you for your work that you're doing. Thanks so much for having us. Absolutely. It's 846.